Hey everybody, so we're talking about rational exponents today. Um, pretty much what that is, is you're going to be having fractions as exponents. And some of you are already freaking out, oh my gosh, it's going to be a fraction. Don't. You've got this, and if anything, your calculator can help you with it. You guys know your power rules, and that's really what it's going to be, because you're just going to be taking another power of a power. So I just want you to remember that square roots um, look like this. They're the radical symbol, but they don't have a number on here. But a cube root is that symbol, but with the 3 on it. And whatever else is inside, you're taking the cube root of that number. Now, the way this ends up working is that you can have any root of a number. You can take the fourth root, meaning you've multiplied some number by itself four different times. So you've done 2 to the fourth power. It's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 to get the number that is inside this symbol right here. This number right here, the number that would also be the exponent on our base, is called your index. This symbol is called a radical. And you'll remember at the beginning of this chapter, we actually talked about this. And then everything that's inside the radical is called the radicand. So think about it as it's canned inside of a trash can. When you're fired, you get canned. Um, but it's canned inside of the radical. Now, if there was not an N here, say if we just crossed that out and erased it or something, Say we end up erasing it or even deleting it right here. Then that would just be this radical right here. And all that is, is that it's assumed that it's a square root because it's assumed that there's a 2. We won't write that 2 in there. We'll just be writing it like so. And it's just a square root. We don't write the number. Because you can't take the first root of number of any number because 4 to the first, for example, is just 4. If you have 5 to the first power, well, it's just 5. It's going to be that same number or variable or expression, whatever's inside of it. All right, so for example, let's talk about this one. If we take the cube root of 8 right here, what we're asking for is what number did I multiply by itself three times to get 8? Now. FYI, since 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, the cube root of 8 is going to equal 2. It's trying to figure out what number that I multiply by itself the time that the index says. Lucky for you, your calculator knows how to do this. And you don't have to know cube roots in Algebra 1. What you do need to know is how to rewrite something. Now, your formula chart will give you this variation where it says that right here, this is the power, and you're going to take it to the m power, and then the nth root. And it gives you that, and that's it. Don't worry about it. Now, another way that you might need to know is this one, which is sometimes it's easier to take the root of something and then take it to an exponent. Now, the way that it helps me remember is that I think about the power lines that are up in the sky. And that's going to be your numerator and your fraction. It tells you the power. And then I want you to think about the tree roots down below because your tree roots are down below. You've got power lines up in the sky and your root, your tree roots down below. So your power is right here and your root is down below. So let's go ahead and try it out with some examples. And all we're going to do is rewrite it. And then for pre -AP, we are going to go ahead and solve it. So if you're not pre-AP, don't worry about the solving part yet. Your calculator will do that for you. All right, so you'll want to remember that the power is going to be the numerator and the root is going to be the bottom. It's going to be that denominator. So let's work with number one. Um, what I like to do is I like to write this number right here, our base down first, if we're converting it into a radical. So I've got my base, 
And then I know that it's to the first power. So because it's up top, it's my power. And then I've got my root. And it says that my root is going to be the second root. But we don't say we're taking the second root. We just say we're taking the square root. So we don't need to write that 2 over there. And then 25 to the first power is just 25. So if you're looking for the square root of 25, well, you put that in your calculator and it's just 5. And that's all you have to do if you're solving it. Now, if you're converting it and you're just rewriting it, this would be okay, but this would be the most accurate and correct answer. So we're going to do the same thing with number 2. And this one's a little bit different because you'll see that we don't have a 1 in here. But same process. I want you to write your base, which is the 9. And we're going to go ahead and write our exponent in. And our power here, remember power lines are up in the sky. And our number that's up in the sky is the 3. And then you're going to take the root, which is down below, just like the tree roots. And you take the square root of it. It's a second root. And remember, because it's a square root, we don't need to write that 2 over there. And now we're having to take the square root of 9 cubed. That is going to be a big number. So instead of doing something like that, that's where the second half of the problem comes in, Prepy. Instead, we're going to take the square root of 9 first, and then whatever that number is, we're going to cube it. And we know the square root of 9. That's why it's easier for us to do this. Square root of 9 is 3. And when you take it to the third power, put that in your calculator. 3 times 3 times 3 will get you 27. And that would be your answer. Number 3, I hope that you can kind of see the trick that this is going to be the square root of 49 to the first power. So again, we're writing our base down making it to the first power because that's our power, taking it to the second root, which is just a square root so we don't put the two, and you know your perfect squares because you guys are awesome, and the square root of 49 is 7, so you're done with that. And that's how easy it is to convert any of these that have a fraction for an exponent. It looks scary, but it's not, as long as you remember that power lines are up in the sky and the roots are down below. Now, pre -OP, I do want you to be able to work backwards as well. And this one's going to go a little bit faster. Your radicand right here, this is what we're going to end up writing down first. And I like to keep it all in parentheses. Whatever's inside the radical, the radicand, you're going to put it in parentheses. All of this is to the first power, so we're going to put a 1 over it. And that's going to be our numerator because power lines are up in the sky, and our roots are down below. This is a square root, which means we're taking the second root, and that would be it. That's all you would need to write for your answer after you've converted it. And you'll notice I did number 5 first, and that's because now you can do number 4. It's the same exact process. We're going to put our radicand down first. We already know it's to the first power, so that's going to be our numerator, which is our power, we're taking a square root, and our roots are down below, so there is our 2. Now this last one is a little bit different. You've got a cube root here, but it's the same process. First thing is your radicand, then you take it to the power, and this entire thing is to the first power, and it's the cube root, so it's 1 over 3. And that would be your answer if you're converting. Now, on your test, they will not ask you to convert. I will not ask you to convert. But you need to be aware of it for Algebra 2. What really you will need to remember is actually how to apply all of this. And if you are so lost over these first six problems, you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. It's okay. All you need to remember is the power of a power rule, which we talked about in the last video. And all we're going to do is we are going to share that love and we're going to put that one half exponent on the 16 and on the x to the sixth power. So we've got 16 to the one half power, x to the sixth to the one half power. 
And guess what? You can type this part right here into your calculator and you'll be just fine. And by the way, if you notice the, anything to the half power is the square root. Square root of 16 gets you 4. And this one right here, because we're doing the power of a power rule, our formula chart told us we have to multiply our two exponents. And what's 6 times 1 half is really just half of 6, which gets you 3. And this right here would be our final answer. And we would go ahead and put a box around our final answer right here. And hopefully yours is a little less jankity than mine. We're going to apply our power of power rule to number 8 as well. So each and every single term gets that one-half power distributed out to it. You take the square root of 49, and it'll get you 7. Apply your power of power rule, which is 8 times one-half for your exponent, and you'll get 4. And half of 16, which will get you 8. And then your final step box your final answer. These are the types of problems that you will need to know how to solve. Make sure that you're at least able to simplify these. Apply your power power rule and don't worry about anything else. If everything else confused you, this is the most important thing that you could do. Thank you for watching and come with questions if you have any.